in this lecture we will continue to discuss progressive shock and we will discuss two more factors um, which basically uh, leads to progressive shock or which basically converts the non progressive shock into progressive shock so basically we uh, discussed that shock is the condition in which shock is a condition in which there is inadequate supply of the blood to body tissues heart is basically pumping blood and it is pumping blood into the body and the body tissues basically utilize the uh, blood and nutrients so if the amount of uh, blood flowing to the tissues is inadequate due to any condition it is uh, labeled as shock and we defined and we uh, considered uh, that a shock is basically having three stages first is non progressive then progressive and finally irreversible after that we also discussed the the first factor which basically leads to uh, progressive shock or which basically converts the non progressive shock into uh, progressive shock and that was the cardiac depression now we have discussed all those things in detail in our last 3 to 4 lectures you can watch them in detail and to understand now we will discuss another factor which basically leads to uh, progressive shock or which plays an important role in the conversion of non progressive shock into progressive shock now the second factor basically is the vasomotor failure vasomotor failure we have discussed so many time that there is a vasomotor center in the brain whenever there is a fall in the arterial pressure whenever there is a fall in arterial pressure and there is decreased perfusion of the cells in the body tissues due to any condition suppose it may be due to the myocardial infarction decreased contractility of the heart decreased cardiac output or uh, due to increased metabolism but if there is decreased uh, utilization of the oxygen and nutrients in a condition of of shock develops in the body then the vasomotor center in all the in all these conditions basically get activated and it sends signals from the vasomotor centers through the sympathetic system to the arterioles to the veins and to the heart and it basically increase the heart rate and it increases the constriction so it you know, leads to constriction of the arterioles it leads to constriction of the uh, veins and it leads to increase heart rate all the factors basically leads to increase in the arterial pressure and basically converts the low arterial pressure into high arterial pressure and in a in a way tries to bring out the body from the uh, uh, the shock the condition of shock now this vasomotor center this vasomotor center basically detects uh, the and the, the decrease in blood flow through the flow of blood which is coming to the brain now blood vessels are coming to the brain and they are bringing blood to the brain the vasomotor center basically keeps on detecting different uh, nutrients and the flow and from that flow it basically detects whether the other cells of the body are receiving a proper amount of nutrients or not now initially if there is a fall in the Uh, uh in the supply of nutrients to the cell due to any condition or conditions uh, or non progressive shock for example develops then there is initially a very intense activity of the vasomotor center a very intense activity of the vasomotor center especially in the first 4 to 8 minutes and sympathetic discharge occur now initially in the first 4 to 8 minutes there is intense activity very intense activity and sympathetic discharge occur and this discharge leads to basically con constriction of the arterioles which increases the peripheral resistance which basically helps in elevation of the arterial pressure then it leads to constriction of the veins which basically helps in the venous return in bringing back the blood towards the heart and it also helps in increasing the arterial pressure it helps in increasing the arterial pressure now if the blood flow continues to decrease if due to any condition for example hemorrhage has occurred a lot of a lot of hemorrhage a lot of blood loss has occurred blood loss has occurred now due to blood loss for example the shock the shock is increasing it is increasing then initially the vasomotor center was very active and it was trying to compensate this loss of blood through different uh, mechanisms the baroreceptor reflex the uh, cns ischemic response the secretion of adh etc etc which we have discussed in detail in the non progressive shock but if the conditions get worse and the blood uh, flow continues to decrease and there is decreased blood flow coming to the brain then after some times especially after 10 to 15 minutes of intense activity this vasomotor center also becomes depressed or depression of the vasomotor center occur and finally it becomes inactive it becomes inactive which is known as vasomotor failure which is known as vasomotor failure then the blood pressure or the arterial pressure may be low then there may be decreased blood flow coming to the nutrients but this vasomotor center it has become inactive it is now inactive and it cannot send sympathetic sim um, signals to the arteries it cannot send uh, sympathetic signals to the veins it cannot increase the heart rate so there is no sympathetic discharge there is no sympathetic discharge and this is labeled as vasomotor failure now cardiac depression the decreased activity of the heart was one factor which led to the development of progressive shock and vasomotor failure which occurs with continuous decreased blood flow due to any reason especially due to the blood loss or due to hemorrhage or due to fluid loss now this leads to in activation or depression of the vasomotor center which is labeled as vasomotor failure but the good thing is that this vasomotor failure or this failure of the sympathetic discharge it, it mostly occurs below arterial pressure of 30 mm of mercury normally the arterial pressure of uh, normally the arterial pressure is around 100 mm of mercury 
hundred. But this condition in which even the vasomotor failure occur, in which even the vasomotor center in the brain becomes depressed and inactive, that it will not be sending, it will not be able to send sympathetic signals to the arteries, to the veins, and to the heart. This condition will occur only when the arterial pressure has fallen so low that it is below thirty millimeter of mercury. So it means that the progressive shock will occur only that when the conditions are so uh, when, for example, there is a lot of blood loss, there is a lot of blood loss, or the condition which are causing the shock are very very severe. A lot of fluid loss has occurred, or there is very very high metabolism, or all those conditions which basically leads to decreased nutrient supply decreased oxygen supply to the cells so in initial sub, in initial conditions in the initial uh, stages of the shock there is activation of the vasomotor uh, center and this basically this act activation of the vasomotor center uh, prevents the uh, the formation or the um, conversion of non progressive shock into progressive shock but if the if the the shock the the, the conditions causing the shock are very very severe then this uh, there will be decreased blood flow to the vasomotor center and vasomotor center will become inactive after some time and this especially occurs when the, the when the shock when the shock is so much severe that the arterial pressure falls below 30 mm of mercury now this must be clear now that after cardiac depression, vasomotor failure is one of the factors which leads to the uh, progressive shock and there is basically failure of the vasomotor center. Now, another factor which basically leads to progressive shock or the conversion of uh, non-progressive shock into progressive shock or which basically leads to the uh, increasing the severity of the shock is blockage of very small vessels, blockage of very small vessels or formation of sludged blood, sludged blood. So, this these are the blood vessels, for example, these are the blood vessels and they are supplying the tissues now the the blood vessels they are uh, supplying directly nutrients to the tissue are very small they are very small when there is blood loss for example or when shock develops the blood flow somehow decreases and sluggish blo blood flow occur sluggish blood flow occur and the blood flowing through the vessels basically decreases the metabolism is still occurring metabolism is still occurring and the cells are basically consuming uh, nu uh, nutrients and oxygen and they are producing acids especially carbonic acid and lactic acid now due due to accumulation of acids in the blood vessels blood vessels the small blood vessels which are supplying blood to the tissues at the at, at the tissue level the blood vessels are very small now due to accumulation of different types of acids especially the carbonic and lactic acid, uh, lactic acid there is agglutination there is agglutination and clotting of blood what happens in agglutination is that the cells start attaching to each other and they form clots blood clots formation occur and when clots are formed when clots are formed then the blood flow cannot occur through these small vessels then the blood flow cannot occur through, uh, to these vessels and then the tissues are not able the cells are not able to receive proper amount of oxygen and other nutrients so this condition basically leads to further uh, further increasing the severity of the shock and conversion of non progressive shock to progressive shock because ultimately when blood flow will not be occurring the venous return will decrease and the cardiac output will fall when the cardiac output fall there will be further decrease in the arterial pressure then there further uh, blockage of occur the blood flow will decrease further the venous return will fall more and the cardiac output will decrease further the arterial pressure will further decrease and this a vicious cycle will occur and this will be another factor after cardiac depression after depression or failure of the vasomotor center this these blockage of the these blockage of the small blood vessels will be another important factor in the formation or the continuation of progressive shock which ultimately will lead to irreversible stage of the shock now once the uh, clots are formed these blood vessels are uh, plugged the, the the blood is very there is very high difficulty for the blood to flow in these vessels and even if the blood uh, even if the clots will not occur even if these blood vessels are not plugged still due to the uh, accumulation of uh, different uh, acids like uh, lactic acid carbonic acid and due to substances uh, that are formed due to ischemia due to ischemia ischemia is basically decreased blood flow to the tissue so due to ischemia due to accumulation of different uh, acids the blood flow will be difficult even if there are no clots even if there are no clots and that decreased blood flow that sluggish blood flow is known as sludged blood so this sludged blood which is basically due to blockage of very small vessel or very small vessel supplied blood directly to the tissues these are basically large vessels they will not uh, be clotted their clot formation or sluggish blood flow will not occur initially in these vessels ultimately the blood flow can stop even in this ves uh, these vessels in irreversible condition or when the patient is about to die but initially this sludge blood basically occurs in very small vessels at the tissue levels where directly the nutrients are supplied to the cells so the progressive shock there are a few more uh, conditions few more factors which basically lead to progressive shock we will discuss those factors in the uh, next lecture but so far we have discussed uh, three important factors which basically leads to the progressive shock first was the cardiac depression which we discussed previously in our previous lecture now we discussed the vasomotor failure which occurs because of decreased blood supply to the uh, brain vasomotor center so initially when there is decreased blood flows there is intense activity of the vasomotor center in the initial four to eight minutes but when the blood flow continues to decrease this vasomotor center become inactive especially when the after 10 to 15 minutes and especially when the arterial pressure has fallen so low that it is below 30 millimeter of mercury then finally 
the other factor which basically contributes to the formation or the continuation of progressive shock is the blockage of very small vessel and blockage of very small vessels occurs because there are there is formation of some substances due to ischemia there are some factors formed in the tissues due to ischemia like carbonic acid and like lactic acid these uh, these uh, these substances basically they uh, acidify the um, the environment and due to which the the blood flow through these vessels is so much sluggish that the blood cells agglutinate with, with each other they form clots they form clots in the blood vessels and plugs occur due to which blood cannot move or blood moves with very much difficulty which is known as sludge sludge blood and these factors basically ultimately lead to uh, progressive shock so in the next lecture we will discuss few more factors that basically also uh, are important in the progressive shock thanks a lot for watching the video